All right, so the October leaves are falling, but the buyers definitely are not leaving. Okay, that's kind of corny. But anyway, we like to have a wee bit of fun. And today we're going to go over basically where we're going, what we're going to see, how to best plan for you and your family to make a best business decision to buy that next home. We're going to talk about some of the lending changes today and then next week, hopefully next week, uh, we're going to have uh, a couple of guest speakers in talking about uh, some of the loan programs, uh, talk about forbearance if you're looking at getting into a different program. And we're going to be, well, kind of covering the bases so you can make, again, the best business decision for you and your family. Now, the best part is this is free. So, hey, do us a favor. Subscribe. Let us know what you think. Hit the bell so that you're uh, uh, alerted when we do this every Saturday. Uh, it is in real time. Uh, it was uh, funny today. I was reading, you know, they were talking about, you know, hey, August is uh, really turning out to be a great month. <laughs> this is October. So if you want real time information, real time, this is real time. If you want real time information so you can make the best business decision, hey, uh, just subscribe and ask the questions. We had some really awesome questions. And so we'll be, uh, we've, we answer those within uh, T minus 30 minutes, except for on Sunday. Anyway, let's get on with the show here and let's see what things have to shake out. So first, I want you to know <laughs> that through the pandemic and post, oh, I guess, uh, kind of post pandemic here, uh, we actually got uh, the, the metrics uh, that uh, are only about six months old. But anyway, they're saying the number one, here you go. The number one remodel done on a personal home. In fact, let's have a little bit of fun with this. We're getting ready to do our donation to Seattle Children's Hospital. Uh, that's uh, what we donate to every single year. Uh, we in, uh, just love the idea of helping a child have a fighting chance at life. And so here's the game. You write down, respond, what you think is the number one change remodel that are done in homes within the last year what was the number one was it uh, roofs was it color of your house was it a bathroom was it a kitchen was it adding hardwood floors what is it what is the number one thing now uh, i'm going to hold this open until hmm, let's go wednesday and whoever gets it right will make a donation to seattle children's hospital uh, in your name of a thousand dollars so uh, let us know. Put that in the comments. Let us uh, well, tell us what you think, and then we'll go from there. All right. So with that, actives, new, on market, pended, and sold. These are the common four metrics that we will you know, evaluate each and every week, and then we're going to talk about what to expect. And because we're also looking at things seasonally uh, so that it keeps you well, kind of in tune with what's going on, as uh, we had a great conversation with Dale and Myra yesterday, different options and strategy on how to well, maximize your dollars. All right, so inventory is up 1.1%, just to let you know. <laughs> this is throughout the Northwest MLS, uh, which is again from the Canadian border all the way down to Tri-Cities. Uh, that includes Walla Walla, well, most a lot of Eastern Washington except for uh, Spokane. And then, of course, uh, the peninsula, you know, like Kitsap County and things like that, uh, excluding some of those areas. But anyway, still a massive area. We're only up 1.1% as far as inventory. To let you know, that's uh, 230 homes <laughs> or that very vast area. So it's a very nominal amount. Now, again, because this is year over year, 2020 to 2021, if we compared that to, you know, 2019, uh, we would actually be, I want to say it's like 42% less inventory. So just keep that in mind. When we talk about new on market, year over year, we're up 9.6%. But when we take a look at it month over month for the same timeline, uh, we're actually down almost 13% total number of homes available. And it's absolutely hurting our, our, our inventory uh, and, and our numbers for what uh, the number of homes that buyers can buy because here we go. We look at pended, pended and new on market are because there's such a limited inventory. Okay, again, when we say limited inventory, people are like, George, are we 
What does that mean? Okay. We have seven days of inventory. And you might say, okay, yeah, so what? All right. A healthy market has four to six months of inventory. That's considered a balanced, healthy market. Not seven days. That's like super low. Even, even a couple of years ago, we had two and a half, three months of inventory. We have seven days. Seven. Seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One week. Sunday to Saturday. One week. Struggling on inventory. When we come down here, this number finally, thankfully, bumped up because we're at 1,350 new homes on, the, the, on our seven-day average here. However, 1,886 went off market right in the same seven days. We closed 1,430. New on market is still being drawn down. So funny enough, because Friday is a big number, and even though it's a seven-day running average, during the week, funny enough, uh, this number doesn't get over 1,000, but yet this one will hit almost 2,000. In fact, last week, I think it ran over 2,000 the entire, uh, you know, uh, Monday through Thursday, whereas this one, uh, the new on market actually was around 700, 800, somewhere in there. And so, again, we are continuing to draw down inventory when we need more inventory. We can tell the same timeline, we're not getting as many homes, as many sellers coming on market. Now, builders are still pushing forward, but they're stymied right now. I was talking to a buddy of mine, Mario, and they have a plat that, uh, that they're working in, and they had to stop construction because, well, they can't get windows. <laughs> That's a problem. Uh, another site that I know of, uh, they can't get garage doors, uh, and that's a problem. You know, they have them, you know, mashed over, you know, to keep the, the weather out and whatnot. But again, they have no garage doors, and on one side, no windows. It's posing a little bit of a problem. And yes, you know, there's ways of overcoming this. However, uh, some that is part of why we're starting to see a little bit of a slowdown. Okay, but hey, let's come up here. New construction is a good time to buy. Why? Okay, so this is one of the little goodies that you learned from, uh, from our show, and don't watch this two, <laughs> two months from now, uh, although that would also have an impact. So understand your big box builders. So you know your Pulte, your DR Horton, which is also uh, Pacific Ridge, uh, you know, Quadrant, which was bought out by a California company. I'm just drawing a blank on what it is. Uh, you know, you've got, uh, who was the other one? Uh, Harbor Homes. I don't think Harbor Homes, but... Uh, I'm drawing a blank. But anyway, all of your big box builders that are out there, Lennar happens to be one of them. When, when you are looking at what is available on their plats, understand they're accountable to shareholders. Okay? Shareholders. That means that they have to get standing product off. Okay? Toll. That's who it is. Uh, I've received in the last week probably four emails, five emails and they're trying to move that product. They have to get product done by the end of the year. They have to get it off their books by the end of the year. And that is a big push right now. So if you're looking at new construction, don't, okay. There's a lot of strategy that goes into this. And, and if you know what and how to best approach it, we can maximize dollars, okay? However, just you're just one of those people that just want to go to the site don't expect to get a different price, okay? That's not gonna happen. They're gonna maintain plat price integrity. For those of you that don't get it, if they reduce price, it affects all of the other homes that have already sold and will be sold. So they will maintain the price. But what you can get are updates and upgrades and the value and what you're able to negotiate there well, that's the difference between knowing how much flexibility is there and what they're willing to tell you. So there's the difference between working with somebody who does new construction and somebody who doesn't, all right? But do as you wish. It's America. It's a free choice. And though there are some folks that are trying to take that away, it is still a free choice. So remember that. Fight for that. All right. When we come back and we take a look at the pended, pended, pretty consistent here. So we're up 8.5% year over year. So we're getting, again, 
a crazy year last year. We're still selling 8.5% more homes as far as being pending, going under contract. We're up 16.3% year over year. Yes, this has been dropping a little bit. Yes, that's a given. Uh, we were at 18% a couple of months ago. We're down to 16.3%. Uh, month over month, we're down 18.7%. A lot of that is because of this. We just don't have enough inventory. So sellers, here's the message to you. You have between now and about mid-December-ish, okay, uh, to, to get under contract. Get your home on the market, get it under contract, okay? Average market time for a well-priced home is still 7 to 10 days, okay? Overpricing your home, kiss the deck, okay? Don't overprice your home. Don't consider sentimental value. Get three or four value opinions from different agents uh, to give you uh, what they feel is a real value. And then look at it objectively. And if you get one that's way the heck pie in the sky, look, they're trying to buy a listing, okay? They want to give you that great number so you'll, you'll sign up with them. And that is so wrong in so many different ways. I can't even tell you. It's like these Z Z estimates from Zillow. It's just, uh, anyway, I don't want to even want to get into that. That's, anyway, that's a different subject altogether. So, look, now's the time. You have now to, uh, between now and, and right around the second week in December to get under contract, which means you need to get things ready. If you are ready, do it. Quit hesitating because the buyers are there. The demand is there. I had a question. He said, George, is it a good time to sell my house? <laughs> yeah. And if you have a challenging home, it is the best time to sell your house because there's so few homes available. That's a buyer. Is it still a good time to buy a home? Absolutely it is. Why? Rates are still incredibly low. Inventory is still there. And next year, we are still going to see appreciation. Why? Because we have seven days of inventory. <laughs> we just don't have enough inventory. Supply and demand. Economics 101. I, I know for a fact that up through Q3 of next year, our market is still going to improve. Are we going to see 1% per year or 1% per month appreciation? Boy, that's a lot of peas. 1% per month appreciation like we did this year and last year in 2022. It's so funny to say that. Probably not. We're probably not going to see that 12 to 14% appreciation, depending on area, but we are going to see something around 9% appreciation, which means we're still heading north. We're still heading up. For those folks in the doom and gloomers that have been talking and you've been watching online saying, oh my gosh, it's mayhem and bedlam, the market's going to fall out. And I keep telling you, no, it's not. And here's the whys, okay? I just had a conversation with one of them. And I asked, I said, well, are you going to move that to now October, November, this mayhem and bedlam. And uh, of course they just kind of laughed and they're like, yeah, we kind of missed that one. I said, yes, a little bit. We've been accurate since 2007, 2005, 2007, whenever we started doing these. We've been spot on every single time, but we monitor the metrics every week. And this is your opportunity to also monitor that. All right, when we take a look at our numbers here, we are still rock solid. Outperforming last year, which again was a crazy record setting year. Rates. Rates are going to be a big deal in the coming months. I'm just telling you, it's coming. Why? Because as predicted, this year is going to finish out right about here. We might hedge down just a little bit, but we are trending upward, okay? Not way up, but gradually upward, right? We were at 2.8, 2.9, 3 points. Fed say, hey, we're going to start pulling back on mortgage-backed securities, okay? To Hedge, yes, inflation, which means rates are going to go up with it. So immediately went up to from 3 to 3.125. Guess what? We're at 3.25 mil points today, par pricing. Okay, watch the video on questions to ask regarding mortgage rates. <clears throat> I'll have Marie post that link. Watch the video, know what to ask. That video, I, I can't even tell you how many people have told us, Oh my gosh, George, now this absolutely makes sense. And now when I've been getting quotes, it's like I ask these questions and they're hesitating on answering. I said, of course they are, because their job is to, is to sell you on a loan, regardless of what it costs to get there. Watch the video. 
It's free for heaven's sakes, but power and knowledge hand in hand saves money. All right. When we come down here, non occupied is still 3.75. Yes. Dan Golden, I was chatting with uh, Dan Golden. We were, uh, uh, you know, saying, Hey, where do we think rates are going? What do we think, you know, is going to happen? Uh, and he thinks it's going to hedge back down. I think it's going to hedge back down just a little bit. Uh, and then next year, I think it is going to go back up. Uh, I think we are going to see next year as predicted somewhere in Q2, we're going to hit 3.5%. That is the prediction that translates into real dollars. Okay. 1.1%, 1, .1%, 1 point is 1% removes 10% of your buying power. So if you lose a half a point, you have lost 5% of your buying power. Keep that in mind as you're looking at numbers. Okay. Now, when we take a look at our seven day running average, we're still looking good. However, sellers, we need more inventory. The other thing we talked about new construction. We talked about inflation. Conforming rates, conforming rates are hinting at going up. So somewhere between 820,000, 850,000 will be our cap where I believe it's seven, I think it's 779, 774, something like that. Uh, they're going to bump it up, which is great because again, it's based on area. And so we're only talking about certain areas. We'll see this, but on the Seattle East side, parts of Snohomish, South King and things like that. Expect that to bump up because it is also based on not only home values, income values, all that little metrics, and they come up with, boop, here's a little price for you. So ours is going up, which is going to be very helpful for a lot of people, especially when now you can, you know, put 10, 15% down instead of 20% down, uh, you know, with some loan programs to accomplish the goals. All right. Other than that, uh, for folks that are struggling with Prices going up every single month. Condos are suffering a bit. Uh, they're staying on market. Um, they're just a there. There is a an opportunity uh, for you to enter into the market and then you know have you know start building that equity you know for future either sale, future rental, whatever that might be. Start looking at condos if you're right on the edge of single family uh, because there will be other opportunities which also means that that will get you uh, tighter into some of the core areas. Uh, that also means part of your light rail core areas, which is going to have a future increased value. So keep that in mind as an option to consider. All right. Let me know what you think is the number one improvement that has been made over the last year. Whatever that might be, let me know if you get it right. The first person to get it right, I should say. We'll do a thousand dollar donation to Seattle Children's Hospital in your name. In the meantime, you guys have an absolutely beautiful day. I will see you guys on the next video and uh, well, it's a little cloudy out there. So stay warm, stay dry, but enjoy the colors. Take care.